we can look at mechanical switches such as relays and single pull double throw switches uh, amongst others in chapter two of Make Electronics Second Edition by Charles Platt. In experiment 10 today, we're gonna to be looking at switches that switch based on electrical currents, such as the transistor shown in here, in particularly the 2N2222 transistor. Now it's got a very specific orientation and a very specific set of markings. Make sure you get the right device and that you always plug it the proper way into your circuit. The current in the transistor flows from the outer leg to outer leg and is controlled by the middle leg. And again, that orientation is really important you get it right. I usually stick transistors in three adjacent holes in the circuit board as shown here. In this particular circuit, when the switch is activated, we'll show you how in a moment, current will flow through the LED and resistor lighting it up. Now here's the amazing thing about transistors is that the current from my finger, remember my finger's probably got a resistance of close to a million ohms or mega ohm or so, is enough to switch the current through the LED. In other words, just a few microamperes of current running through my finger with the applied nine volts is enough to switch milliamperes of current or enough to light up the LED. Now to understand how transistors work, we have to take a step back and develop a more sophisticated model of the insides of electrical components. And what's shown here is a particular material called a semiconductor. And uh, electrons are shown as uh, the little balls uh, moving around with negative charges. And then uh, the holes uh, left behind by them in this model are shown by the pluses. So normally the material is electrically neutral and uh, each hole is matched to an electron. But when I apply a voltage from a battery, I pick up electrons and start to move them, leaving behind the holes. Um, the higher the voltage, the faster the current um, moves, so the higher current I would measure on my ammeter. Um, at zero applied voltage, the electrons simply uh, hang out with uh, the positive holes, the opposites attract. Um, and if I um, push, uh, put the battery in the opposite direction, I just find the current flows the other way. Now, this is be poss possible because the energy levels uh, shown in the yellow areas um, have some space. Now an insulating material has a band gap, an energy gap that's large between um, sets of energy levels. And so only if I have a material which just partially fills one of the bands am I actually able to have a material that conducts electricity with some resistance. Um, by the way, the uppermost band that's got electrons in it is called the conduction band, and the next lower one below that uh, is called the valence band. And so whether I have a material which has uh, extra charges above the band gap or a depletion of charges below, we call those a P or N-doped material, I'm able to get conductivity. And if there's no dopants at all, I get no current. Now what happens when I take two such semiconductor materials and place um, them together. Well, if it's the same dopant, it looks just like before. Uh, the electrons run around in response to the applied current. Um, but if I take one P and one N type, I have a diode. And this is how diodes work. Um, in this case, I have a forward bias, which means that the voltage is such that current flows. And when an LED turns on, this is what happens, is we create a little waterfall actually between the different electronic levels so that electrons as they go around the surface fall over. And as they spill over down that energy landscape, they emit light. Uh, if I put the voltage the other direction, what I'll find is that I'll move a few electrons around for a while, but they won't necessarily have the energy to get up the potential barrier. This is the situation actually that exists in uh, another device you're familiar with called a photovoltaic solar cell. We create uh, a barrier um, which the electrons can't uh, get over without the help of light. Your LED doesn't collect much light and so it really transmits very little current when it is in the negative bias direction. This is the meaning of a diode as an electrical component it generally consists of a PN or NP junction. That is the two different types of semiconductors. One you might say underfilled and the other overfilled with electrons with a large gap between the allowed rungs up the energy ladder. 
and it only allows the flow of current in one direction and not the other. Transistors, which allow you to actually switch electricity using an applied current, require putting several of these PN junctions together. We'll be studying in particular NPN, bipolar junction transistors. Spend some time playing with the simple PN and NP junctions under different bias situations in this FET semiconductor simulation. And then please watch the video link uh, shown here, which shows the inner workings of an NPN junction transistor and transistor amplifier circuit. To simulate transistor circuits, using the Lush Simulations website, go to Circuits, Transistors, and let's start by picking up just a simple NPN transistor. You can see at the top is the collector. Uh, we put a plus two volt bias on it. Um, on the opposite side, the emitter, which is the side that follows the arrow out on the NPN transistor, we put the ground. And then the middle lead, uh, the base, is where we apply the switching current. Now, for the 2N2222, um, about 0.7 volts is needed um, to activate uh, the transistor. That's the energy to overcome the, the PN barrier uh, in silicon, as shown in the previous video. And um, you'll notice that uh, a small current um, that is applied to the base um, does in fact mean that more current is switched through the big vertical pipe that is the plus two volts to ground. So that small current gets magnified by approximately, in this case, a hundred fold. And that's what the beta value uh, means. It is the number by which you multiply the small base current by to get the total collector current. Of course, you can never draw more current than is available from the source, but we found batteries are capable of supplying quite a large amount of current. Beta for typical transistors uh, is 100 to 200. The 2N2222 is about a beta of 200 or 200 times the amount of current. Here's uh, the second circuit that's uh, in this chapter um, where we're going to be changing the applied current um, via a potentiometer. Now this potentiometer is uh, one of the largest ones in the kit. It's about half a mega ohm. It's got three leads and I'm just going to test it out here on a separate part of my circuit board. So with the power off to the battery I've put myself on the mega ohm, two mega ohm scale and when I look on the outer two pins on the resistance mode I find that I turn the pot and of course the total resistance doesn't change but I move um, to measuring from an edge pin to a center pin, I find that as I spin the pot, the resistance goes uh, from zero to the maximum value of about half a mega ohm uh, in this case, just like the potentiometers we took apart earlier. Just always be sure that you're plugging your pot in so that the three leads go in three separate rows of the breadboard. And now we're gonna move it up and place it in the position where before I was tapping my fingers. So before I was switching a tiny amount of uh, current uh, with my finger, which then switched a large amount of current thanks to the transistor action. Now I'm going to adjust uh, that amount of current by tweaking that potentiometer a little bit um, so that I can move up and down just a little bit in the switching current, having a big effect in the output. And you can see I've made a pretty effective dimmer of my LED. The video doesn't give adequate contrast to show the complete range of brightnesses uh, that I can achieve. It should be a little bit more of an obvious effect when you do it at home. If you use too large of a potentiometer, too small of a potentiometer, you won't see the LED really dim at all. Again, the purpose of um, that second resistor is to current limit through the LED so we don't completely open the large pipe thanks to the transistor and burn it out. Now I make a current measurement, which means I break the circuit, switch my meter over to current mode. That may involve, as a reminder, switching the 
probe position on your meter, and I complete the circuit through the meter. And of course, when the circuit completes, the LED will light back up. We're going to use this to estimate the beta or current amplification value. So I measure about 3 milliamps when I'm in sort of a mid-range position on my pot. A uh, mid-range position of the pot would be about half of its total resistance, or about 0.25 mega ohms. So I can estimate the current going to the base as 9 volts, my battery voltage, over 0.25 mega ohms, or about 36 microamps. Well, if you take 36 microamps and you multiply it by about 100, you get to approximately 3 milliamps, which is the current I measure on the collector. So what if you want more gain? Well, one way to do it, other than by a different transistor is to actually cascade two of them, collecting the collector to emitter in one transistor to the base of the final one. This allows you to actually um, measure very small changes in resistance, uh, which is kind of neat because the total current gain is going to be the beta factor of each transistor multiplied. So if I have a beta of 100, that would be a gain of 100 squared or 10,000 across the whole circuit. And that's what's shown here in the so-called Darlington transistor pair, two cascaded transistors. Uh, very small current right now when the switch is closed to that two mega ohm resistor. Uh, current is about 1.1 uh, microamp onto that first base. It's 100 times that flowing at an intermediate speed in the second um, line. And then finally, through the 470 ohm current limiting resistor for the LED, the current is flowing very large. We have milliamps of current, enough to light up that LED. So here's the assignment uh, for experiment 10. We made a lot of conceptual developments in the last couple chapters, moving past the simple water flow model of electrical current to consider charges uh, first of different polarities, positive and negative charges, uh, creating that displacement current that allows current to run through the broken gap in a capacitor. And then today, charges which not only have different polarities, but also different energies existing inside a material. So take a moment and think about perhaps some of the other refinements of scientific theories which you've experienced uh, in your life so far, places where an existing model just hasn't been adequate over time to explain future advances or more complex situations. So please take a moment and reflect on that and think about other ways in which you've had to modify and build models as you've gone along and trying to understand something. Now for the building assignment, the Darlington pair is not covered in the textbook, but I would like you to try to build it using two 2N 2222 NPN bipolar junction transistors. Whereas our first transistor circuit was able to switch the current through an LED, uh, by measuring the small current that flows through the tip of a finger, the Darlington pair should actually be able to measure the current transmitted through an entire human chain. So grab the hands of some of the people you are living with and uh, see if you can tell if a large set group of people holding hands is actually enough to switch the current. Any one person dropping uh, out of the human chain should be enough to turn off the LED. Only completing the circuit uh, will allow the current through the LED to go on. And please recognize that milliamp to light the LED isn't flowing through your bodies, only that tiny switching current thanks to the amplifying effect of the two transistors in the Darlington pair. Take a picture, put it in your logbook along with a estimate, just a rough guess, of what the total resistance of that human chain was, and using a beta squared factor of 10,000, how much current you think uh, was running through the human chain that replaces the two mega ohm resistor and switch in the Darlington pair circuit diagram.